Have you ever wondered about the origins of one of the oldest diseases known to humanity? Leprosy? Today, we delve into the fascinating and sometimes unsettling world of this ancient malady. Leprosy, also known as Hansen's disease, is a chronic infectious disease caused by the bacterium Mycobacterium leprae. This slow-growing bacterium primarily affects the skin and peripheral nerves, leading to some of the most characteristic symptoms of the disease. Leprosy's insidious nature lies in its ability to target our body's nerve cells. The bacterium Mycobacterium leprae primarily damages the nerves by invading the Schwann cells, which are responsible for the myelin sheath around the nerve fibers. This invasion is not a mere trespass. The bacteria once inside the Schwann cells cause significant damage and inflammation. This internal turmoil within the cells leads to a breakdown in their functionality and ultimately a loss of sensation in the affected areas. Why does this happen? The nerve fibers, which were once protected and insulated by the myelin sheath, can no longer transmit signals effectively. This communication breakdown between our body's systems is what leads to the characteristic numb patches of skin and muscle weakness seen in the early stages of leprosy. This nerve damage is the primary cause of the symptoms seen in leprosy. In our next scene, we'll delve deeper into these symptoms and how they manifest in the body. Symptoms of leprosy can take a long time to emerge, sometimes up to 20 years. Three main types of this disease are tuberculoid, lepromatous, and borderline leprosy, each with distinct symptoms. Tuberculoid leprosy, the less severe form, often begins with numb patches of skin indicating nerve damage and weakness. Eye problems may also be an early sign, leading to potential vision loss if left untreated. Lepromatous leprosy, on the other hand, the more severe type, is characterized by widespread skin lesions, nodules, plaques, and thickened dermis. Muscle weakness may occur, along with eye issues that could lead to blindness. Borderline leprosy falls in the middle of the spectrum. It exhibits symptoms from both tuberculoid and lepromatous types, including skin patches, numbness, muscle weakness, and eye problems. As the disease progresses, regardless of the type, more obvious signs like skin lesions, limb deformities, and loss of sensation can occur. It's crucial to identify and treat the disease early to prevent these severe outcomes. Leprosy is not a single monolithic disease. It is classified into two main types, porcibacillary and multibacillary. Porcibacillary leprosy is a milder form with fewer than five skin lesions, while multibacillary leprosy is more severe, with more than five skin lesions and possibly affecting the nerves. Diagnosis of leprosy is based on clinical signs and symptoms. For instance, the presence of skin lesions with decreased sensation to touch, heat or pain is a clear indication. Skin biopsy and nerve function tests may also be used for a more definitive diagnosis. In addition to the clinical signs, symptoms, skin biopsy, and nerve function tests we've discussed, another diagnostic tool used is the lepromin test. The lepromin test involves injecting a small amount of leprosy bacteria into the skin. A positive reaction, usually a bump, within a few days indicates the body's immune system is responding to the bacteria. This test helps in classifying the type of leprosy. However, it's important to note that the lepromin test is not a definitive test for leprosy, but it does play a crucial role in helping classify the type of leprosy a patient may have. Now, let's move on to treatment. Leprosy is curable with a multidrug therapy regime. This usually involves a combination of three drugs, dapsone, rifampicine, and clofazimine. This treatment can last for six months to two years, depending on the severity of the disease. While these drugs are effective in treating leprosy, they are not without side effects. Dapsone can cause problems like nausea, vomiting, and severe anemia. Rifampicin may lead to liver toxicity and discoloration of body fluids. Clofazamine, on the other hand, can cause skin discoloration and dryness. To sum up, leprosy is a chronic infectious disease caused by Mycobacterium leprae. It presents with symptoms like skin lesions and nerve damage, the disease is classified into porcibacillary and multibacillary types. Diagnosis is largely clinical but can be confirmed with skin biopsy and nerve function tests. Treatment involves a multidrug therapy regime which can cause side effects like nausea, liver toxicity, and skin discoloration. Understanding leprosy is crucial, not just for medical students or healthcare professionals, but for everyone, because awareness is the first step towards eradication. And with that, we conclude our journey into the world of leprosy. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed.
If you found this video informative and helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Your likes, comments and shares not only help to spread awareness about important topics like leprosy, but also support our mission to educate and inform. Do you have any questions or thoughts on what we've discussed today? We'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. And if you'd like to stay updated on more content like this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Thank you for joining us on this journey of discovery and learning. Until next time, stay curious and stay informed. And remember, your engagement might just make a difference in someone's life.